Hi, my name is Uma Ramakrishnan and I'm a professor at the National Center for Biological Sciences, which you can see behind you. So I've been here 15 years and uh, I work on wildlife. I work on tigers, uh, many other species. The first question you may have is how does someone who works on wildlife end up working on wastewater in a city? Why am I in this session uh, of TEDx? Well, um, I work on bats and bats shed viruses in their feces and we are interested in this because this allows us to survey or to check for these viruses. Um, and as soon as the pandemic started, I was really piqued. I was really interested to think about how can the tools that I have uh, where I use non-invasive samples, fecal samples, urine samples to understand more about animals be applied in the context of this health emergency. Very early on, we learned from studies around the world that people who are infected with SARS-CoV-2 who have COVID-19 shed the virus or uh, you know, uh, release it uh, in their feces or in their poop. And we all know where poop goes. It gets accumulated and goes to the wastewater treatment plants across our city. So uh, early on, scientists showed that uh, wastewater uh, collected from households across the city can be used to monitor or look for the presence of infections in the city. Now, the, the virus we have in wastewater is not infectious, so don't be worried. You're not going to get it from wastewater. However, it serves as a way to actually look at broad scale infection in the city. So everybody cannot get tested and I'm sure all of you have been through the experience of the nasopharyngeal swab. It's not very comfortable. So neither is it a very comfortable nor is it cheap. And so it's not possible to do these surveys across uh, and at scale. So given that we were interested uh, in, in this and how wastewater can serve as an indicator of infection. Uh, we teamed up with uh, Vishwanath at Biome and with help from the Bangalore Sustainability Forum, we thought let's just test this out in two sewage treatment plants. Let's look at whether we can detect SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in wastewater and whether uh, this is also present uh, in some uh, amount in the treated wastewater because this is clearly very important. Treated wastewater is pumped out of Bangalore to uh, surrounding areas in peri-urban Bangalore for agriculture. So our work initially showed that while we could detect uh, SARS-CoV-2 in uh, inflow, the water coming into the sewage treatment plant, almost all water uh, which was outflow treated faced water did not have any SARS-CoV-2 in it. So in collaboration with BWSSB, we were able to explore this. And while it was just a very small pilot, we worked through the second wave and we were able to investigate inflow and outflow uh, in the city. So how do we actually test wastewater for the presence of SARS-CoV-2? So just as you get a test, you know, you get a, a test uh, to check whether you are infected or not. Uh, someone puts this swab into your throat and scrapes inside you, inside you and pulls it out. We take that sample to the lab. We extract RNA or the genetic material of the virus and we look for um, whether that sample has viral RNA, right? And we do this quantitatively. We can actually assess whether a sample has more or less viral RNA. Similarly, we can take wastewater, but now in wastewater, the RNA is much diluted. Imagine that there's lakhs of people whose uh, waste comes to this sewage treatment plant, but only a few are infected. So clearly, the amount of RNA in the wastewater is very diluted. So the first thing we do is we filter the wastewater to kind of concentrate whatever signal there is of the SARS-CoV-2. We then extract the RNA as you do in regular testing. Uh, and as in regular testing, we use similar approaches to quantitatively assess whether we have more, less or no viral RNA of SARS-CoV-2. So in this way, 
we can actually assess whether a specific sewage treatment plant has high levels of viral RNA, low levels of viral RNA, or no viral RNA at all. And over time, if we keep doing this, we can hopefully catch um, surges in infection before they are caught by regular clinical testing that you do in the public health center.